In the latest episode of Hack My Growth, we're gonna be looking at six powerful functions within Google Sheets that every SEO needs to know. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If it's your first time watching or maybe you've been watching a while and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so now. We create new content each week to help you get the most out of your digital marketing activities. As I said in the opener, we're gonna be talking about different Google Sheets functions. Now, Google Sheets is a powerful tool. Uh, it's a really cool tool to look at our data, manipulate our data, and really to dive deeper in to get better understanding of the things that we need to do and the areas that we need to improve in. So I'm gonna show you some cool functions that I use almost every single day in order to help us grow here as an agency and help uh, surface new opportunities for our clients as well. If you've got a favorite function and we don't cover it in this video, feel free to share. We'd love to continue that conversation here in the community and help everybody be the best that they absolutely can be. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about six Google Sheets functions that every SEO should know. I'm gonna walk you through each of the functions and then I'm gonna show you an example of how we can use those within Google Sheets. This can really speed up your time. It also help you combine a number of different data points, which is very useful when you're trying to really understand what's going on with a specific project uh, or a specific data set. So the first one is probably the one I use the most and it's VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP is gonna be used from pulling data from one spreadsheet into another. Now, there is a caveat to this. You have to have at least a shared value within each of the sheets. So you need to have either uh, like a keyword on each of the sheets or a URL on each of the sheets because it needs to have that vertical lookup in order to find the information. The syntax is relatively easy. Uh, it starts with equal sign V lookup. Next, you'll have the search key. So this would be the, uh, the, the vertical list of cells that you want to use as the key. Next, you're going to have the range, so the range of cells you're going to be looking at on the other sheet, the index, so the actual bit of information you need, and then how you're going to sort that information. So let's take a look at how we can leverage VLOOKUP. So in this data set, I have a list of top queries that we pulled from Search Console. Search Console is giving me the clicks, the impressions, the click-through rate, and the average position that we rank for each of these search queries. Now this is really helpful information, but what if I want to know the search volume for these queries as well? Well, I can go into my favorite SEO tool and I could pull all the search data like we've done here and then compare it sheet against sheet. Now this is, is helpful, but honestly copy and pasting the volume over could be a pain in the rear end. And this is why VLOOKUP is so powerful. What we need to do is start on this page, the search queries page, the page we want to add the search volume to. We go ahead and click here and insert a column and we'll call this column volume. Now, in order to find the search volume for this term, which is located on this second sheet here, we wanna use VLOOKUP. So we'll go equal sign VLOOKUP and as you can see, sheets will actually pull it out for you. And then I'm gonna select my key, which would be the A column, comma, and now I wanna go over to the sheet here and I wanna select my range. Now, since I'm only looking to find volume, I only need to go to the, the, volume, uh, the volume column here. I don't need to go all the way to the end. Now, if I wanted to pull more and more information, like if I wanted to pull competitive uh, score or maybe the cost per click, I could go all the way down as well. So I just wanna get the volume, so I'm gonna to go to there and I'm gonna push the comma key again. Now I wanna find the index and I wanna find all the values in the second column. So one here, two. So I'm gonna say the second column two, and I want the exact value, and what I need to add there is false. This will give me the exact value which is in this column, and I go ahead and hit enter. Now, it's giving me an NA for this one because there wasn't a search volume for this query. But if I wanna get all the top 100, I just double click this right here, and as you can see, it just goes ahead and fills all that out for me. Now I actually know the different volumes or how much traffic each one of these queries gets without having to copy and paste back and forth with my data. The next function we're gonna look at is LIN. LIN is used for counting the number of characters within a cell. This could be helpful to know how long a title is if you've got a bunch of titles within a sheet. Uh, also can help you count how long your keywords are, things like that. Uh, this is very helpful and it's a relatively easy function to use. It's equal sign LIN and then you use the cell. So let's take a look at how to leverage this. So using the same data, if we wanted to see how long these queries were, we could go ahead and add an additional column 
to the right and we could call it length. And here we're just going to use the lin function. So L E N lin, the length of a string. We'll select the string here in that parentheses and it goes and tells us exactly how long um, that specific string is. And a string is just a set of, of characters, like text characters. So this can be helpful, like I said, when we're looking at title tags, things of that, where we want to optimize around specific length. Uh, it's an easy function. It's easy to add extra data in and help us get, honestly, a, a lot more information out of our research. So, so far, we know how long each of these keywords are. We've got some volume data, and we've com combined this with the data that we've already pulled from Search Console. So we've combined two pieces of data, and now we have a lot, of, uh, a lot more information to work with. But let's talk about another function that we can leverage. So sometimes when we import our data, we have a number of data points within a single cell. In order to get it out, we need to use the split function. And split function will take that data and use a specific character in order to pull it into fragments and separate it into cells in a row. In order to do this, we use the split function. And we can use that by selecting a specific cell and using the delimiter and breaking that cell up. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So here we've got uh, a number of pieces of, of data that we've exported from our tool. And as you can see here, we've got trends. But all of the trend line data is actually in a single cell. In its current form, it's not extremely useful and it's honestly hard to differentiate and, and really get some value out of. So we need to split this information up. The way we would do that is hit equal sign split and we click on that then we select our cell then what is the delimiter so we are looking at it here and we can see that it's it's split up by a comma so we would use this syntax if it was a semicolon we would use that but we would use the quotes and then what is splitting the data up and then we would end the quote there that way it knows to or how to break up the data for us go ahead and hit enter and as you can see it split all this information out a quick hack, if you just double click the corner, it'll actually bring all that information down below you. And now we've got all of the trend data split out into individual rows and cells. The sparkling function works really well after we just used the split function. So a lot of times I'll get data like that that is pulled from SEMrush and now I want to actually see that trend line data. If I'm inside of SEMrush, I can see it. But if I actually export the data and I put it into a sheet, I just see a bunch of numbers. So Sheets has this really cool function which allows us to create a quick spark line graph right within a cell. Uh, so this can actually help us see the data and visualize the data which can allow us to get a lot more meaning from it. So let's look at the spark line function. So now we have all this trend data and we've pulled it out here. But again, it's still not super useful if we're just looking at it. It can be very overwhelming. We really just want to see this trend data in the form of a spark line. So we use the equal sign and start typing in spark line and Sheets will bring it up for you. And then you just pull the range of data that you want to be used within the spark line and close it. And now you can see I've got this really cool little graph here that shows me the trend line. This is really helpful to know which keywords are trending up as well as which ones are trending down. And we don't have to kind of mess with all of this extra data, but we can see it right here within our sheet. And now we know very quickly which terms maybe we should target now as opposed to not worry about as much or at least understand the, uh, the, the trends with the data itself. What's really nice about using Sheets is you can do a lot of analysis from within one document. You don't have to jump all around and go to different tools if you know how to really leverage the Sheets. And once you have your data, you can manipulate it quite a bit. We've seen this with VLOOKUPs and splitting our data and creating spark lines and looking at how long characters are. So Import XML is another great tool that we can use. And this can actually be used to scrape data or pull in data from a number of structured data types, including XML, HTML, and quite a few others. And the function, again, it's not very difficult, but you do need to understand the different XPath queries you can use. Now, I don't remember all these, and this is why the Internet's such an amazing thing. We can go and look those up so that we can really leverage this, uh, this awesome function. So you would go ahead and type in import XML. You'd have a URL or a cell, 
and then you would look at the XPath query. So let's look at a couple ways that we could leverage. So I pulled some URLs from a search result and now I want to learn a little bit more about them. So I want these all in a sheet and I wanna make sure that I have their title and their meta description. Let's say I'm doing some keyword research and I wanna understand the, the SERPs a little bit better. So in order to get the title, I'm going to use import XML. So we're gonna go import. Now make sure you choose the right one. This is import XML. And now I'm gonna need a URL. This is very important. So I go ahead and click on this cell because the cell is a URL. I'm gonna use quotations and inside the quotations, I'm gonna go forward slash forward slash title. Now make sure I close this and hit enter. What it's done is it's went and looked up that URL and it's given me back the title tag. And again, I can get all the title tags for these pages by double clicking that or just pulling that function down. Pretty cool, right? You can do that very quickly. You don't have to go back and copy and paste and do all that stuff that's extra hard. You can get rid of duplicates. So now you can understand for this query, which was like best screen recorder or something for Mac. Then we can look at what pages are ranking and then what type of content too. Like right here, we can see that for all of these, these different queries, it seems to be listicle articles that are ranking really well. So if we're trying to rank for this or we're trying to match user intent, we might need to create a listicle piece of content as well. But let's say we want to get a little more information here and we want to find the meta description. We're going to use the exact same function that we did before, import XML, and we'll go ahead and use the URL again. Now I don't have the meta description one memorized, and like I said, this is where, where Google is really great. Um, but this guy um, has some pretty cool stuff on his site, David Samano. Um, but he's given us the function right here. So I can go ahead and copy that. And again, I wanna put this in double quotes, paste it in, and there we go. Now we've got meta descriptions. We can go ahead and pull that down. So by using import XML, I went ahead and took this list of URLs I already had, and I found all the titles and all the meta descriptions. And again, now we can use you know a little bit of the other functions that we talked about before. So let's say I wanted to know how long these title tags were. I could go do title length, and I can see how long the, the characters are using lin, right? And so you can actually do a ton of analysis while I, you never leave sheets, right? Never once have I left sheets and I pulled all this information. I could do the same thing for description length. And so while having a crawler obviously is really good, you know, Screaming Frog or uh, Sightbulb or anything like that, these, uh, these sheets that Google has for us are actually really helpful as well to do things very quickly if we need to do some quick analysis or we want to combine our data. The last function we're gonna talk about is called import data. And I usually use this to pull data from APIs directly into Sheets. And the function is relatively simple, it's just import data and then you have your, your URL, the API URL, uh, the request that you're making. And then based on that request, you'll get certain data points back. So let's look at how we can leverage this. And for this example, I'm gonna be using SEMrush's API. Um, so all APIs are a little bit different, so it may not work perfectly for you in the exact same way, but I would look at some other uh, ideas and some other things that people are doing with import data if you can't do it the exact way that, that I am showing you here. But this is a really cool way to import lots of information into your sheet, again, without having to go to other tools. So once again, we're here at this last sheet where we've got URLs and we've pulled our titles and our metas, but let's say I wanna get some more SEO metrics about these specific URLs. And this is where I could use import data. Now there's a little function that I'll typically use ahead of this just because uh, a lot of times APIs will stack data down and that's going to break once we do that over and over again because it's gonna be replacing the data. So I like to start all of these with transpose. And this is a really cool one too. So this is actually seven, I'm giving you an extra one. Transpose will actually tell it, instead of returning the data downward, um, I want you to transpose it so it actually goes left to right. And you can stack these functions. So now that I have transpose, I can also now use import data. And this is the function that we're talking about. You're gonna need a URL to do that and we'll go get that next. SEMrush has uh, an API, um, you know, it is very filtered, I would say, but it can be really helpful. 
uh, if you're trying to get some quick metrics and understand how things work. So in this case, we're actually gonna be looking at URL reporting. And so we can look at specific URLs and I wanna see uh, some organic keyword metrics around these, these specific pages. So you're gonna need an API key in order to make this work. If you don't have an API key, you're not gonna get data. <laughs> um, but it's a relatively simple request. And so I would go ahead and copy this and I would paste it in here. And what this is saying, you know, here's the API key would be in here. Uh, I wanna display, you know, a maximum of, of 10 results. And I'm looking at a number of different features that we can do here. Now, I don't need all these. I just really wanna look at um, keywords. And I wanna look at for a specific URL. Now, in order to make this work, we don't wanna do SEO book every single time. We wanna actually run the cell. And so you have to do double, you have to do double quotes, and then you have to do double ampersands, and then it allows you to fetch this from a specific cell. Now, I'm gonna run this cell in one second with my API key, uh, and I'll show you exactly how the data works. So now I've put in my API key, and now you can see that we have uh, a couple data points. We have keywords, position, and search volume, which will all show up here, and they're going left to right. And now I've got 10 keywords, you know, what keyword they're ranking for, uh, what position they're in, and the search volume. And I can do this for my top 10 pages, and it might take some time, just depends on uh, how the API runs. But now I've got a ton of keyword data on each one of these URLs. I've got some of the top terms they're ranking for, the positions they're ranking for them, in, and the search volume. And that was all done from import data. And I used a little caveat, like as we, we remember, uh, I used the transpose function in order to allow me to push that data from left to right, because otherwise it would have gone straight down and, and it would have repeated over itself. But these are six powerful functions that we can leverage in order to get more work from Google Sheets. As an SEO, you probably work in Sheets quite a bit. Uh, you probably work in these, these different data points. And this is going to help you use your data more efficiently and more effectively. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, please comment below. I'd love to continue that conversation with you. And until next time, happy marketing.